How's it going, gang? How are we all doing? Today is my final presentation for uh, semester fall 2023 for one class. Only one presentation this year, which I think is okay, I suppose. I'll be presenting for a class of three people, mostly, most likely. Probably not. There's probably going to be a class full. I got to expect that, but people are just naturally scared. So, yeah. For archive purposes, this is going up on the channel. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to suck. The quality and sound quality, everything like that is going to suck. Hopefully a mouse doesn't come in and tickle my toes again. And yeah, enjoy. No worries. Official, real effort content is coming soon. I'm getting better. No worries. <laughs> I'm getting better. I keep saying no worries. Just enjoy. All right. So I'm going to, just for a gesture for the teacher, because the teacher likes standing over here, I'm going to flick every time I want to switch slides. So this will be my last attempt today. Let's do it. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming in today. I know this class is on average close to empty in these times of nervous sweat and the idea of presenting, but I put a lot of effort into this, and I'm happy to see those who have shown up. Today, I'll be informing you on the career of firefighting, one of the few careers that don't require a college degree when, listen, when starting, as to shed light on what they do exactly into their field and see if I'd be interested in joining the ranks myself. We will learn the requirements necessary and what it takes to be one, and we will learn of just how important they truly are and the sacrifices that they make along the way. Then. We can see if it's something of interest, not in just me, but you. I learned a ton of information through my interviews and research, and it's kind of changed my eyes on how I see the job. But whether or not it's something I'd still be interested in, that's for the end of the presentation. So, firefighters hold an important role in the public services branch and are easily undergoing the most dangerous environments of them all. Next to man, the biggest threat to us looming is fire. Now, a little bit of history. Since the dawn of time, specifically in a Greek writing, fire was originally wonder, a wonder that only gods could wield. However, it was stolen by Prometheus and gifted to man, an act that would lead to the greatest invention and weapon of all mankind. Being an uncontrollable force, Prometheus wanted to give humans the ability to change the world, whether that be for the good or the ill. Fast forward to present day, and mankind still can't control this destructible force. But that's when the firefighters come in. These guys swoop in and perform a variety of tasks under the looming threat by the support of inspection, suppression, prevention, and extinguishing of flames. They handle a wide variety of hazardous materials, and on top of that, they have to use their quick medical skills as an emergency service when in need for rescue or aid. You don't just need to respond to emergency calls, but a variety of non-emergency incidents as well. And it doesn't need to be on fire, as a firefighter also acts as a pre, um, paramedic and EMT when in need, as seen in most smaller firehouses in towns. They even have to deal with snow and other in, in, uh, environmental situations other than fire. But what separates them from not just being your ordinary medical assistant is the fact that they have fire at the beginning of their names. Firefighters must always be ready for reports on emergency incidents. You must have a good understanding of technology and the facilities given and must operate a utility vehicle known as a fire truck that has a variety of gadgets and gear used during depending on the assignment and one must willingly run into various dangerous dangerous threats having to rush in for the rescue whether it be fire suppression and or a search for a trapped or injured person in the area they must be able to escort the person out of the area and safely perform medical treatment if needed along the way all this while wearing a suit ranging from 45 to 75 pounds depending on the job. So imagine how weighed down you would feel, and then imagine how they must feel at the end of the day having to deal with that all, all the time. And we're not just talking small houses. This can include buildings and scrapers that include dozens of flights of stairs and complex layouts, 
and we'll get to the health effects of what all this causes later. After it's all over at the end of every task, and you've made your rescues, you must then participate in cleaning the battlefield, and especially your gear. You must clean your gear after every assignment, every job. That will lead to bad health risks if you don't. We'll get to that later. Anyways, you practically live on the base for 24-7 and are granted a good selection of facilities like a gym because you do need to stay physically in shape for this job. Now, unsurprisingly, firefighting is so dangerous to your humanity that it has a long list of requirements to follow if you plan on being one. Firefighting kind of sounds like enrolling into the military. You have to pass multiple exams, computerized, physical, medical, psychological, and background. You must be a citizen of your country, be at least 21 years of age, provide a ton of legal and, identi and identity documents, must be good at heart and character with a motor vehicle license and understand English. You are required to have a high school diploma or equivalent by the time of your first appointment and must be, have at least 15 college credits earned in a degree of choice or you could work a full-time job for a six-month period prior to you getting accepted into the academy. You must also hold certifications in CFRD, also known as first responder, CPR, EMT, and some other major firehouses will even require a paramedics license. You'll earn a CFRD during the 11-week training course. But do not forget, only 5% of those who enroll in the course will get a badge and be accepted in the end. So, you still want to sound like a shonen protagonist. Well, you better get a move on. Dep the job is surprisingly high in demand and is projected to grow by 4% by the end of this year. Depending on how adverse you want to go, it can be really difficult and take a long time to get even get accepted by the more major fire houses which is where the money is really made. Most standard stations will earn you up to 50k a year, some going lower depending on the area, and it could be as low as 35k a year, or 38k, which is still fairly okay, and like that's just in the area, so places like Albany, where I am at least. But let it be known you're doing all this for standard Armenian American pay for a job without a college degree. More major firehouses will pay you up to the 100k mark, but still know that this, the job's far more dangerous and active than others, so of course it's worth that amount of pay. Now you want to throw yourself out there and think, man, this job seems like a sacrifice, but I always, wanted to see, it, but I always see in the media just how physically fit and cool these people are. However, there are things they don't tell you until you arrive during training at the academy, or even on your first day of work. And you may be saying, the money sure sounds worth it, and I want to give it all to, my, to show my care for the community. In which, this is when the reality truly sets in. Of course, our favorite being dread. You are about to lose it all for glory and respect. This career is one that goes against all the nature of man, and because of this, you must face the certain dread that lies before your eyes. But fire chiefs and mentors in training will most likely inform you of this. You will get burned and face multiple injuries throughout the career. You will most likely get cancer and multiple types at that. You will most likely divorce and lose connections to all social around you. You will potentially die on any assignment. You will gain likely a variety of mental disorders like PTSD mainly PTSD, and you will have the least consistent schedule imaginable, so good luck planning or going anywhere. You will be able to retire at the unspringing age after 30 years of, of service, but the chances of living past 50 is unlikely, and only grows and most people grow, pass away five years after retirement. Everything you do in the, physically in the job is made for man not to do. The weight of the suits take a horrible toll on the body, not to mention the continuous tasks that involve equipment and ladders that can permanently damage and badly sprain and strain the body. Can't, can't handle this fact? Starting to doubt the idea? Well, then don't go through with it. 
But as most fire chiefs will tell you, weak minds like yours will only be wasting yourself and many others, especially others, time. But hey, you'll get physical benefits and the feeling of brotherhood of your team, and you'll get you'll get some respect and maybe some glory along the way, knowing that you sacrificed a bit of yourself to keep the many people that you rescued alive. So why? Why am I interested in being one? Well, I decided in the end I would go through and get my degree in individual studies for general education, and I wanted to gain that first generation student title. The reason I want to go into the field like this is so I would be able to show who I am and what I'm truly capable of. Not just because it's something that I said I wanted to do in kindergarten, just because I couldn't think of anything. Rather, I think of it more as a reflection of myself. I want to prove myself through rigorous action and satisfy my want to help my community by doing so in a big way. I know somewhere down the line I won't be, I won't be alone on this journey and I can co grow close to the ones I am with constantly. I look forward to gaining many skills and traits even if it removes some of the lesser ones that I hold dear to myself. In the end, you're not looking for glory and respect is something you'll gain a little of. But I and many others on this path see it as an unforgettable experience worth living for and feeling good knowing that the people you helped can keep going because they sure wouldn't be without you. So, are you willing to potentially throw it all away for others that wouldn't be otherwise? It sounds like a lot. It sounds like a huge hassle. But I promise you it's all worth it in the end. And I couldn't say I wanted to be one if I had anxious thoughts of regret. And even so, I'd have to come to terms with that and accept those factors in the end. Thank you for listening. Ooh wee zooey. That was good. I'd say that was my best thus far. It's all coming back to me. I had to reduce some movement because, man. Yeah. Still looking for the mouse. That thing. <laughs> I sure hope he's okay. All right. I hope you all enjoyed. Wish me luck. Remember. To all you want to be, or soon to be, or planning to be public speakers, that you're not nervous, you're excited. Take deep breaths before your actions, and it'll all be worth it in the end. I, it will all feel good, too, when you're up there. It'll all just flow. I'm going to cross out some mistakes I made in the speech, and I skipped some lines because filler, filler. <laughs> all right. I'm going to work and continue on improving myself and my channel and stuff like that. I plan on doing some things here and there. And overall, some major projects that I'm going to be putting a lot of editing and such. I didn't even... No, I'm not even going to get into the topic right now. But I have a lot of plans. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Wish me luck. I hope you all have a wonderful t day out there. Stay safe. Much love. Goodbye.